Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and you guys know what time it is. It's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I got linked a video uh, by actually quite a bit smaller of a channel than mine, and I don't normally cover those sort of videos, but I thought it was interesting enough that I thought I would cover it uh, because it is actually from someone who is a very respected strength athlete uh, and, and actually really knows what he's doing. Dude's strong, he's jacked. He's basically what you look for in a power lifter. When you look at that guy, you're like, okay, that's a real power lifter. Um, and that's Ben Pollock. And it was a whole video that he did discussing uh, deadlifts, deadlift variations, and developing your lats, uh, which is a, again, topic I really like. So let me put on my plus five out of speechcraft. Lovingly called my plus five out of autism by many of you, and let's talk about this. Um, I want to dress up front before we get into all the other lat stuff, uh, the, the rack pull thing, because he did demonstrate a rack pull and you guys know I'm not a fan of rack pulls at all. Um, now, it's not to say I'm not a fan of block pulls done correctly for advanced athletes, but I will give some credit there. He actually said, or a block pull, right? Because I am generally against rack pulls of all types. Uh, Ken, I love barbells. I don't like barbells being destroyed. And to me, a rack pull is nothing more than a barbell destroyer. But um, the nuanced thing here is that People who sent it to me, at least one person who linked it to me, said, hey, I don't understand. Why is this guy using rack pulls when you say rack pulls are always bad? Um, because what he's doing is not what anyone else on YouTube is recommending. So this is why we need to understand the difference. And he noticed he was very, very hesitant and said, you need to very carefully assess if you want to use something like this. All right. And that's the key word there. Um, and, and what I mean is that anyone who's ever listened to me disparage the rack pulls that people are doing and then watches what he does, if you actually understand why I'm against rack pulls and you watch what he does, you wouldn't even actually bring him up. And that's the interesting point because what he did is nothing to do. Other than the barbell destroying aspect has nothing to do with the totally useless exercise, the above the knee rack pull. And, and at the knee rack pull is not really much better, right? It's not really much better. Uh, and our concern there, and I'll jump into what he did versus what we're normally concerned with with people doing the useless exercise. Uh, people want to do above the knee rack pulls. What does that mean? That means you've got the barbell pulled behind the knee. So even if you're at the knee, it really is almost replicating what you would do off of a, off of a, um, like a hitch. When you hitch a deadlift at the top, which would get disqualified in comp. And what you are doing is you're just squatting the weight up for a short range of motion, right? It's not actually a hip hinge, and people need to understand that. The rack pull, uh, one of the reasons it, a 1,000-pound rack pull doesn't carry over to a deadlift, like you're still a 500-pound deadlifter who does a bunch of 1,000-pound rack pulls above the knee, his deadlift is not going to go up at all. And he's not going to hypertrophy from it either. Uh, that's actually a myth that it grows the traps. That's complete alpha destiny and Scott Herman fitness nonsense. It's not based on reality. This is a delusion that they created for you guys to market to you. It's not real. So the, the point we have there is that they're just squatting the weight up. There's no hip hinge involved. Uh, that actually reduces the load on the mid trap, reduces the load on the lats, and just turns it into a partial exercise for the hips and quads and, and, and glutes and things, right? That's what it actually does. That's what it actually does. It actually de-emphasizes the back and actually removes a lot of the action of the, even the trapezius. Um, so it just to lift more weight and ego lift. You've removed the hip hinge element. You completely removed it. Um, one of the things you guys need to note if you go watch what Ben is doing with the rack pull here, you guys notice that he is really struggling with a lightweight. That should tell you something because he is strong. Like Ben is not one of these guys that you say, oh, he's, he's a little bit strong. He's okay. Dude is strong. This is a guy who 600 pound deadlifts for reps really aren't going to be that big of a deal. He's all the way down with 400 and some change on these rack pulls and doing some reps and it's hard. He's working. Like he's straining. Uh, should be the first giveaway that something different's going on here. He's doing a harder exercise, not an easier exercise. Normally, when you see guys come over and, and, and do some sort of rack pull who are doing it for ego instead of deadlifting, they're able to do just as much weight, if not more, than what they can deadlift. Usually up to twice as much as they can deadlift. Um, Alpha Destiny is a perfect example. He can rack pull double his deadlift. 
And I do mean that literally. Again, he does a lot of smoke and mirror stuff um, with the different pulls to make it look like he can deadlift more than he can. He's a low 500s deadlifter at the most, at the very most, on a legitimate deadlift. So he can, he could frack pull double his deadlift. Ben's down here working in the 400s as a 700 plus pound deadlifter. Ben has pulled over 700 pounds like half a dozen times in competitions, at least. All right, he's strong. Like he's strong, straight up. So what's going on? He's pulling number one below the knee, bent over. All right, so if we're going to talk about back involvement, it is that bent over position that gets your lats and traps and everything more engaged on any sort of deadlift, All right? It should be common sense. The more upright you can stay, the less your, your traps have to isometrically contract and the less your lats have to work. Notice he's bent over relatively far. Now it's also below the knee. All right, when you take it below the knee, you can't use the posterior chain to drive out of the bottom as much. You lose your initial pop earlier on. You turn it into a back exercise. And what I would note there, he noticed, you guys notice that he's got a snatch grip. He's doing a real wide grip. And then he says, well, that's to get more back involvement. But really, what is it really? If he had blocks that went lower than that, would he need to do the snatch grip to get what he's doing? No. All right, look and do the math. Notice he's in the very bottom of his rack. That's as low as his safeties go. He's at the bottom. That's still not low enough, even though that's actually putting it below his knee. By bringing his grip out, it forces him to bend over further to have the same position below the knee to start. Right? It essentially turns it into as if he had gone another pen or two lower that doesn't exist. All right, that brings it all the way down to if he were to be straight-armed and have it at the same position as far as the way he's bent over, but he didn't have the safeties in the way, he would be pulling from mid-shin. Okay, It's a mid-shin equivalent in terms of range of motion with an exaggerated bent over. It's pretty much, he's pretty much almost pulling stiff leg bent way over. What he's done is he's created a more back-specific exercise. Now, the reason that I don't ever talk about this, and I don't even talk about this for most people, is that using something like this, as he said, is for very advanced lifters. I would recommend you do it on blocks, not in a rack, ever in a rack, personally. If you're going to do it, you need to buy blocks. If you're such an advanced power lifter that you think that you could get a little bit more back emphasis off of an assistance movement like this, and it's so important of you to do it, I'm going to say go ahead and dish out the money for a pair of blocks. Get a set of blocks to pull off of so you're not destroying bars, if the exercise is that important for you. Um, but the point we come over to is that this is going to be something like this for very specific weak point training for people who've assessed that they need it. In his case, he's using it for additional back hypertrophy, um, as a lift variation, and it works for someone at his advanced level who's doing that, who wants to de-emphasize lower body and create a pure back exercise, and that's what he's done, all right? Pure back exercise, and it will make your lats grow more. It's forcing him to also use a lighter weight because you can't use the posterior chain to drive it up. He's bent over more. It's a pure hip hinge type movement, out wide, pure hip hinge, pulling from, again, mid shin de-emphasizing the posterior chain, making it into a tremendous lat and trap and erector uh, exercise. That's what it basically is at that point. But it's a total hip hinge. He's hip hinging it up. It's not squatting it up like these guys do on the above the knee. Totally different movement pattern. Zero carryover back and forth. Uh, but it's also for very, very advanced lifters. And here's what I would say. If you are still coming to YouTube for training programming advice, I'm going to be honest, you probably do not have, and I'm not talking about people who are coming here just for the entertainment. I'm talking about people who are legitimately coming to this platform for knowledge. If you are at a level of training knowledge and training programming that you need to draw any information from me or anybody who's talking on YouTube, right? If you're at that level still, you probably are not an elite enough athlete with enough knowledge of training programming to implement partials of any sort of rack like this on your own without a coach writing it out for you. You're not gonna be able to get the most out of it. You probably do not have enough programming and training knowledge to actually correctly utilize it as a tool. 
Um, so hence kind of the problem of discussing it. Uh, but as far as the other absolutes go, my point still stands. I'm very much against people doing rack pulls just for destruction of bars. That's why we have blocks, use blocks, if you have a legitimate need. And he's got, he's created his own legitimate need. Um, but I do like the fact that he made a whole video discussing deadlifting for the lats. It's its own interesting video. You guys can check it out for yourselves because I always tell you guys the same thing. Deadlifts build your lats. Anyone who thinks deadlifts and deadlift variations do not build lats doesn't understand exercise science. They don't understand biomechanics, and they probably have never been around real lifters. I'm not saying that's the only thing you should do for your lats. It's not the only thing I do for my lats. But they do build your entire back. Deadlifts have the potential to build your entire back pretty damn big. And once you start getting into specific variations and minor, minor differences, it's essentially bodybuilding exercises. Right? And that's what it is. Um, and I don't think anyone's going to argue that someone like Ben uh, hasn't kind of achieved a, a buried muscular physique due to stacked. He is jacked, but he is still a serious power lifter. Um, and, and in all honesty, I see that. To me, that, that is what a serious elite power lifter looks like. That's the norm. That is what elite power lifters look like, guys. They don't look like what you guys have this preconceived image in your head of what you think a power lifter looks like. No, man, that's what an elite power lifter generally looks like. In my experience, it meets. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.